Is surgery to fix hip impingement better than physical therapy? That's what a 2020 meta-analysis claims. It looked at three randomized controlled trials and concluded that surgery is much better than physical therapy to fix your hip pain. But if we dig deeper and look more carefully at this paper and the three papers that it cites, we see that the truth actually points in a very different direction. I'm gonna take you on a deep dive through four papers so you can see the tricks and games that are being played to railroad you into a surgery you probably are not gonna like. So if you're ready, let's get ready to think right, move right, and feel right. If you have hip pain and you've been given the FAI or femoral acetabular impingement diagnosis, you may have been told that your bone shapes are the cause of your pain and that the only way to fix your hip pain is to get surgery. Your doctor, your surgeon, and your friends on the internet may have pointed you to a 2020 study that claimed that FAI surgery is more effective than physical therapy definitively. And when you read the abstracts, it seems clear that yeah, surgery is better than physical therapy for fixing hip pain from FAI. Wait, so is this video over now? No, this video is not over yet. We're going to do something that nobody else ever does. We're gonna take a deep dive and look at how these studies were done. We're gonna look at what the papers actually say and look critically at the results that they got and the conclusions that they arrived at. That sounds kind of boring. I promise it's not boring and it's well worth your time to watch through to the end of this video so you understand the science so you can protect and heal your hips. So let's look at this first study that was published in January of 2020. It's a meta-analysis of three other studies that were done. And in this study, they claim that patients with FAI syndrome treated with hip arthroscopy have statistically superior hip-related outcomes in the short term compared with those treated with physical therapy alone. That sounds like a slam dunk, and if you're just reading the abstract, it sounds like, okay, this is obvious, you should just get surgery for FAI. But when you read papers like this, it's very important to dig a little bit deeper. This paper used three trials to make this claim, and if we look at those three trials, we'll see that this is just a steaming load of horse poo. That is not a nice and professional thing to say. I know it's not a nice thing to say, but when you look at the quality of these trials and what the trials actually say, you're gonna understand why I call the conclusions of this meta-analysis horse poo. <laughs> So let's look at the first trial that this paper references. They had 222 participants aged 18 to 60 with FAI, and then they put some into physiotherapy and some into a surgery group. They only did a short-term follow-up between six and eight months, so we don't really know how the surgery actually does in the long run. They also use something called the HOSADL to score things, and even the improvements that they saw in the hip surgery group weren't even that good. It's not like you got surgery and you were 100% better. You got a little bit better, hopefully, but that's it. The physical therapy group also got better. They just didn't score quite as high, and that may have something to do with the fact that people in the physiotherapy group only got eight sessions of physiotherapy over the course of five months. We also have no idea what kind of physiotherapy they did in this trial. There is no information that I can find on that. What if they were doing the wrong exercises? Exactly. If they're not doing the right exercises for their issues, they're not going to see positive results. And if they only have eight sessions over five months, that means they're having very limited contact time. And if this is like other physiotherapy in the UK, their sessions were averaging around 30 minutes long, which means you had very little time to learn how to stretch and strengthen the right muscles and to explore new ranges of motion. In short, this study is super biased and very problematic, and don't just take my word for it. Listen to the response of an orthopedic surgery in Australia who commented on this paper. The study seems designed to demonstrate the efficacy of surgery rather than a fair, unbiased comparison of two interventions. This study has treated two interventions unequally and unfairly, the physiotherapy intervention being biased against hip arthroplasty from when the outcome measurement was done. It's unusual to find a study involving physiotherapy as intervention to have the primary outcome measured six to eight months post-randomization and after just five months of physiotherapy treatment. That's from Dr. Go, a pretty smart, critically thinking orthopedic surgeon in Sydney, Australia. In short, he's saying this study is super biased and not worth the paper it's printed on. You should go take a look at the full text and go read Dr. Go's full response on the BMJ online. 
All right, well, that's just one trial. What about the other ones? The next one was published in The Lancet in 2018. In this study, they again claim that hip arthroscopy leads to a greater improvement than personalized hip therapy, and the difference is clinically significant. What is personalized hip therapy? Personalized hip therapy is a protocol they designed specifically for this study, and it was basically a physical therapy conservative care protocol that was designed to fail. It includes 24 exercises that will never lead to better strength or flexibility. The protocol itself actually forbids the patients from doing any painful stretching, anything that feels like a hard end range. The protocol also suggests that people use painkillers or even get hip injections to kill pain during the first couple weeks of their physiotherapy sessions. That basically guarantees that people can't feel what they're doing properly and the physiotherapy sessions are so limited and so short that there's no hope that people are learning how to progress to different kinds of exercises over time. I will do a full video breakdown on this so that you know I'm not just BSing you. And finally, they use something called the IHOT 33, which is a questionnaire they use to determine whether your intervention worked. So if you got physiotherapy or you got hip arthroscopy, they have you take the IHOT 33 before and after and at the end of follow-up. If your score improves, then that means it was successful. That sounds pretty straightforward. It is straightforward. And when you look at the actual outcome scores, you'll see that the surgery actually didn't solve people's problems. If anything, it made them feel a little bit better, but not that much. The physical therapy group also got a little bit better, but not as much as the surgery group. But the physical therapy group was getting really crappy sets of exercises and not a lot of instruction, guidance, and supervision. They were also told never to do any kind of stretching that might possibly improve their range of motion because the orthopedic surgeons who designed this study made the claim that you shouldn't do any sort of hard, semi-painful stretching because you might be damaging the bones. And finally, the follow-up period after surgery and after physiotherapy was all over the place. Particularly in the people who had surgery, follow-up times were really mixed. The problem is they did follow up starting from randomization, which means let's say today I get assigned to the surgery group, one year from now, 12 months from now, I'm gonna get my final follow up. But due to delays at NHS, it might take me weeks or months before I actually get the surgery. So it was possible for some patients in this study to get the surgery done and then have their final follow-up done only a few weeks later. That means their answers to questions on the IHOT 33 would be sometimes completely invalid because they would still be recovering from the surgery and would only be able to answer their IHOT 33 by using their best guess. You'll see that people who underwent surgery did not get a full cure of their hip problems. If anything, they got maybe a little bit better, but are still having moderate difficulty throughout the day. For people in the hip surgery group, their scores went from a 39.2 to a 58.8 on average. 58.8 out of 100 is not a passing score in any test, unless it's on the curve. Maybe they graded it on a curve. You don't get to grade this on a curve. If your hips don't work well, they don't work well. Okay, well that paper doesn't look so good. What's the last one say? This last one is a really good one because it compares PT to arthroscopic surgery with a two year follow up. They found statistically significant improvements in both the surgery group and the PT group when rated on the HOS and IHOT 33. Again, those cool little questionnaires. But the mean difference was not significant between the groups at two years. They also use something called the GRC, which is the global rating of change. And basically you ask a patient, mm, did things change? Are they better? Are they worse? The median GRC across all patients was that they, quote, felt about the same. Wait, 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 all patients said that they felt about the same? Yeah, they say here, there was no significant difference between the groups at two years. Most patients perceived little to no change in status at two years. Maybe it's because it was just one surgeon? Sure, it's possible that one surgeon is just doing a really bad job, but when you look back at these other studies and you look at other studies that have been done on FAI and satisfaction rates from surgery, you see that a minority of patients might feel much, much better, but on average, people don't really feel that much better and in some studies, you even see that over half of the people who undergo surgery for FAI are disappointed by the results. So to recap, this 2020 meta-analysis claims that FAI surgery is clearly better than physical therapy. The first paper they cite doesn't even pass the sniff test. Another orthopedic surgeon points out just how clearly biased that paper was and how biased the whole study construct was. 
The second paper they cite shows that surgery for hip impingement doesn't really cure you and is only better than really crappy physical therapy that's designed to fail. Both of these first two papers use really short follow-up windows so you actually don't know anything about the long-term outcomes of hip surgery for FAI. The final paper they cite shows that after a two-year follow-up window, people who got surgery and people who got PT feel about the same, which is just crappy. Hmm, yeah, it does smell like horse poo around here. Thank you for your understanding. So what are people supposed to do? The first thing you need to do with any orthopedic surgery is to look at it very skeptically. There is a long history of orthopedic surgeries to fix joint pain that have turned out to be no better than placebo, meaning fake surgeries. To date, nobody has done a fake versus real arthroscopic hip surgery study, and I'm waiting for that because I'm sure it's going to turn out just as badly as shoulder impingement surgeries and knee meniscus surgeries. But while we're waiting for that research to happen, it's important to just ATM always think muscles. Muscles move bones, they're responsible for where your bones are positioned in space. If you find that there's a position your bones just can't seem to get to, that's because the muscles all around the effective joint don't know how to coordinate and work together. Some muscles might be too stiff and unable to lengthen. Some muscles might be too weak in a shortened position and might be unable to help you lift and hold that bone in place. Orthopedic surgeons will often tell you anytime you hit an end of range and it's painful, it means you're crushing bone into bone and damaging your labrum or damaging your cartilage. That line of thinking will mean you don't try to improve your range of motion. That belief is not backed up by science. It's just a belief and it means you will just sit around resting hoping it'll get better. Instead, if you work on regaining length and strength in all the muscles around your hip joint, you'll find that you're actually able to move into positions that felt before like they were impossible and painful. Well, I already tried PT and it didn't work. A lot of physical therapy protocols start with the assumption that FAI is a bone problem and therefore they have you avoid doing anything that feels uncomfortable. That is exactly what they've done in studies that use the personalized hip therapy protocol. To improve your hip mobility, you're going to need to draw from multiple sources and experiment with your own body and let your own sensations guide you as you gradually challenge yourself to do new things. You'll need to ignore the physically feeble fallacy which doctors and PTs will throw at you from all sides. The physically feeble fallacy is basically when somebody who doesn't know how to help you and who themselves probably has some issues tells you that you should be just satisfied and content with being permanently crippled because you know what? You've got some sort of deformity that nobody can fix. The best thing you can do is find a flexibility or mobility coach somewhere local to you who will help you gradually improve your hip control and range of motion. The next best thing is to use online content to guide your explorations. I have tons of videos that are free here on YouTube to help you figure out how to unlock your hips. And I also have paid premium programs on my website at uprighthealth.com DIY. Be sure to check out Healthy Hips 1 and the FAI fix to help you improve your hip mobility. For more free videos to help you improve your mind and your body, check out these videos here. Support this channel using the join or thanks button on YouTube or the Patreon or PayPal links you'll find in the description box. Like, share, and subscribe with the bell notification on. And as always, I hope you remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't.